This happened around 15 years ago, and to this day, whenever I think about it, a cold shiver runs down my spine. My cousins, my brother and I were incredibly lucky. My parents own a timeshare in Laguna Beach, and it is a good five to six hour drive from where my family and I live outside Las Vegas. My cousin and her boyfriend at the time were visiting from Philadelphia, and they, along with my aunt and grandma, were accompanying my family to California. Now, my parents, aunt, and grandma were in one car and had gotten a bit of a head start because my dad is very punctual about leaving on time. However, we kids, I was 25 and the oldest, so not really a kid, but you get the point, were about an hour behind them due to my brother being slow. Anyway, my cousin's boyfriend was driving and my brother was in the passenger seat. My cousin and I were behind them, chit-chatting. It was around 4 p.m. and we were somewhere outside Nipton, California. Now, for those of you who have gone through Nipton before, you know the place is incredibly creepy. There is a general store with an outhouse bathroom, and I believe a restaurant. We were maybe 10 minutes from Nipton when we saw a car pulled off into the desert. We drove by, and my brother said, There's a guy lying in the desert. We went back and forth about calling 911 when we realized none of us had any signal. This was before smartphones were widespread. I was able to get service if I held up my phone slightly. We figured we would turn back just to assess the situation. We turned back, and my brother and my cousin's boyfriend got out and started calling to the guy, asking if he was okay. There was no answer, and just as they decided to step closer to see if this guy was dead, my cousin and I spotted two people hiding behind the car's trunk. We screamed for my brother and her boyfriend, and I think they had heard rustling because they sprinted back and piled into the car. Meanwhile, the guy who was supposedly injured sat up, and two scary-looking men appeared. My cousin's boyfriend took off, and we were all freaking out. Meanwhile, I had bars, so I called 911 to report what happened. We pulled into Nipton while I talked to a dispatcher who took my information and said she would send someone out there. We decided not to stop, we just wanted to keep going. I would like to say that is the end of my story and that we made our way to the beach, but it is not. We continued to Baker and decided we were safe enough to pull into the Mad Greek for a bathroom break and some strawberry shakes and gyros. We were waiting for our order when my cousin's boyfriend came over to the table looking like he had seen a ghost. He pointed outside, across from the Mad Greek at the little trading post where we had parked our car. Guess who pulled in three cars down? Yes, if you guessed the three rough looking men, you would be right. They got out, looked around, and walked into the post. Meanwhile we were getting our food to go and devising a way to get out of town without any trouble. However, fate was on our side that day because those three came out of the store carrying beer. Thank God for the RV that was sandwiched between our SUV and their car. They got in their car, pulled out, and sped off like madmen. We took that as our cue, and a sign from above to get out of there. We ran to our car, got in, and did not stop again until we reached Laguna. I never heard back from anyone regarding my call to the police. To this day, we all regard it as the scariest thing that ever happened to any of us, and I refuse to take the Nipton cutoff route, even if it is a shortcut. I was around 15 or 16 at the time, and my mom, dad, and I were on a family trip to New York City. It was a really good trip at first. We visited the Statue of Liberty, Madison Square Garden, Times Square, etc., and for the most part, it was a normal vacation. But towards the end of our trip, everything went to chaos. It was our last day there, and we were trying to get back to the airport, so we decided to take an Uber. A couple of minutes passed, and a gray Civic pulled up to the sidewalk we were on. I remember noticing that he had Lyft and Uber stickers on his car in multiple places, almost excessively. It felt like he was trying to prove that he was our Uber, it was just a small thing, but looking back, I really wish I had taken more concern about how suspicious this guy was. Moving on, we were running late, 
so I'm guessing my dad didn't really pay attention to the license plate because this guy was definitely not an Uber driver. He was a lanky, African-American man wearing clothes akin to rags and looked like he was drugged out, but at the time, nothing seemed off to us. Again, we were running late, and what happened was the least of our expectations. The ride was normal until we got to the airport. We all expected him to get off the highway and let us off. He didn't. Instead, he casually continued down the highway, past where we wanted to be dropped off. This was when my dad noticed that the man didn't have a meter or his phone set up with the Uber GPS open. We were starting to get worried, and my dad asked him in a stern voice, Excuse me, where's your meter? The man stayed silent. Flustered, he asked once more, this time yelling, Where is your meter? Again, no reply, but at this point, the man started dashing down the highway, weaving past other cars, and just driving very dangerously. We were all panicking. My dad was screaming at him to let us off. My mother was crying and praying with her rosary, and I was in shock. I froze up. I couldn't even cry or scream as much as I so desperately wanted to. I was completely immobilized. This continued for a while, driving down an unfamiliar road to God knows where, with the car only getting faster and faster. I started having those classic end-of-the-road type thoughts like, holy shit, this might be it, and there's nothing I can do about it. But luckily, we were saved. I don't know if we passed by it, or if someone in a car we passed had called the cops, but we soon heard sirens blaring behind us, and we were being tailed at high speed by multiple police cars. One of the cops had a megaphone or something to amplify their voice and screamed out for the man to pull over. Obviously, he put up a fight, and the police had to actually cut him off for him to finally stop. The police helped us out of the car and got all our things from the trunk, while putting blankets around us and telling us that it was going to be okay and that we were safe. At this moment, I felt the biggest wave of relief wash over me that I have ever felt in my life. Don't get me wrong, it still messed me and my family up hard and I was still left pretty traumatized, but I was at least glad that my family and I were alive and safe. The police gave us a ride back to the airport, and everything went as planned from that point on. But holy shit, am I glad that I never had to find out where this guy was taking us and what he was planning to do with us. Just thinking about it still gives me goosebumps. When I was a kid, maybe six or seven, this was mid-90s, we took a family trip to the beach in Florida. We were staying in a beach house a short walking distance from the beach. We went to the beach, and my mom told me to stay where she could see me, but I wandered way down, and before I knew it, I was lost. A lot of the houses looked the same, and I wasn't sure which one was ours. Plus, I couldn't see my mom anywhere. It started to rain, I came to a path that I was pretty sure led back to our house. Only it didn't lead to a house at all, but instead to a parking lot. There was a big, dirty van parked there. It was the only vehicle around. I was about to turn back when I noticed an overweight woman with brown hair, a hot pink tank top, and those big, clunky, thick glasses that were popular in the 80s, waving and smiling at me from the passenger seat of the van. She said something like, Oh my, it's raining. Where's your mommy? Let us take you to her. It's dangerous to be out here in the rain. She was very friendly. In the driver's seat was a very overweight man without a shirt on, a hairy gray chest, and some clunky looking gold chains. He was wearing yellow tinted Elvis shades and staring at me intently. The woman stepped out of the van and kneeled down to me. She asked how old I was. When I told her, she gleefully remarked, Oh my, we have two boys your age at our house. You should come over and spend the night. We've got movies, Nintendo, and in the morning we've got all types of cereal. I had been taught all about stranger danger, but at this point in my life, no adult had ever given me any reason not to trust them. The lady continued talking about stuff like how the boys have go-karts and they like to drink chocolate milk. 
She made it seem very enticing for a seven-year-old kid, and at this point I trusted her. I mostly liked the idea of getting to play with some kids my age. Then I remembered that I needed to ask my mom first. I told the lady this, and she said it was no problem, that they lived just up the road and my mom shouldn't mind. It started raining harder, and she opened the sliding door of the van and said something like, now let's get you out of this rain and go find your mommy. I knew logically that I shouldn't do this, but the lady seemed really nice, and I was desperately wanting to get out of the rain. As I walked toward the open door of the van, I noticed an awful stench that almost made me gag. This set off alarm bells in my head that something wasn't right. I looked up at the fat man who was not only staring at me with this menacing glare but had this real creepy toothy smile, and his teeth were stained a dark yellow. I could pick up on a very messed up vibe from him. I knew now that I should run, but the woman was ushering me to hurry up and get in. Her demeanor had changed. She was being demanding and trying to literally push me into the van. She sounded angry and said, Get in already, in a tone that was the complete opposite of how she had sounded before. I jumped to the side and started running as fast as I could. The woman managed to grab my arm or wrist, but somehow I was able to quickly break free and run back to the beach. I think she tried to chase me, but like I said, she was very overweight. I made it back to my mom, who was freaking out. I tried explaining what had happened to me, but I don't think that at seven years old, I was able to convey the gravity of what had happened to me, and I didn't fully understand it myself.